Hello everyone and welcome to an unboxing slash preview slash review slash whatever else you want to call it of Bot War 2 Turbo Edition. I covered Bot War, the original release, I think it's one of the very first smaller independent games on the channel, well, probably one of the very first unboxings I ever did. Kept in touch with the person who makes it and recently they got back in touch to say hey there's a new edition of the game out, would you like to cover it? And I said sure. Uh, this is not a sponsored video or anything like that, no money has exchanged hands, however I have received this starter edition for this version of Bot War for free, along with some upgrade cards for the models I did purchase myself, and a, uh, some card terrain that we'll take a look at at the end of the video real quick as well, which is more to scale for what you're supposed to be using, because the terrain I used in the Bot War Battle Reports back in the day um, was never scaled well because i just didn't have any terrain of that scale but that's been fixed now also uh the, the box is a little dented in the middle thank the british postal service for that they do good work if by good work you mean punching boxes so we can take a quick look at the back here before i open it the original starter box for bot war was the valiant faction and the atlanticans but I believe this is Valiant and, yeah, Coil this time around. So I don't have any of those miniatures. I did buy some other additional purchases. I'm not sure if you'll be seeing this before my most recent painting update video, but I am currently painting some Bot War minis that I bought for myself back in the day. They just never got around to painting. They're Beast Lords. These are some large lads. There's a little preview of one of them if that video hasn't gone live yet. So I'm getting through some miniatures I had saying, but this is the starter set. You can buy directly from the website listed there. If you're in the UK, there's a new stockist for them as well. Back when the first edition of Bot War was out, I think only Firestorm Games were the only stockist in the UK, but there's now a new two. Uh, Level Up Gaming also stocks them. I checked the stock of both. They have quite a variety. They have a bunch of starter sets for the other factions that aren't included in this box. And they seem to have a steady supply of, of the miniatures. And I've ordered from both in the past, not Bot War specifically from Level Up Gaming, but ordered from both of them, never had any issues. So there we go. There's what we have in it. I imagine it's relatively similar beyond the minute, like none of the miniatures are in common with the other um, edition. And as for the dish, uh, the edition differences, I am not sure because I will, I will have to see for myself. So let's crack this open again. The lid is dented thanks to my postal service. They do good, good work. But let's see what we have. We do have a Bot War tape measure. The other starter edition also came with that, although I don't remember having that symbol on it. I think it had a different symbol on it, so that's been slightly changed. I think this might be a bit more compact as well, and honestly, I've been needing a compact measuring tool rather than full-size construction ones, so let's just see. It does indeed function and is needed for measuring movement, measuring attack range, and, and whatnot. So I'll put that to one side for now, put it over there. I don't know what this is. I think this might just be for protection, honestly, because if you knew it was traveling a long way. Yep, it looks like it was just for protection. Then we have poster. Yep, or oh, uh, a pull out. The game is set in the year 1985. The bot war rages on. The recovering democracy holds fast against the multiplying evil forces that seek to destroy and enslave. The Kal Emissary of the One remains true to the Alliance and his Valiants fight unwaveringly alongside the outnumbered but brave Democracy forces. So that is some of the starter sets shown off there. Put this over and we do have indeed a little poster. One, we'll put that up there for now. I don't want to accidentally wreck it. So we have our dice and energy cubes. They look identical to the first edition to me. So that's the, the, the very damaging dice. Your red dice or your shield dice for blocking. Purple dice are your basic attack dice. That's just used to decide who goes first, I think. I can't quite remember what the normal D6 is for. And the cubes are for, you have an energy pool based on the robots you bring to the fight and you denote who, ha who has those for actions in a given turn. And if you start losing units, you start losing power from the well in future turns. You have to be a little careful with that. So yeah, that looks like the same kind of stuff to me. Then we have a bunch of, I like the, the packaging used for minis in this game incidentally. It's always these, not Ziploc bags, I'm not sure what they're called when it's just a tear open, but I like that it keeps them secure. Um, that looks like it's all color coded. Yep, so this will be the Valiants in blue and then Coil in red, it looks like. Yeah, 
Now, we are going to crack these open to take a look, but I'll do that in a minute. For now, let's see what else we get. So these are the stack cards. I, again, because I'm not 100% on how this edition differs from the previous edition, I can't tell you precisely what's changed about these stack cards. Presumably it's new traits and such, but these will be for each of the, oh, that's what's on the, the tape measure. It's the coil logo, because that's the Valiant logo. I remember that much. So from what I remember, you've got your, uh, your basic movement stats. Strategy rating is how fast you go in turn order within a given round, your movement range, your ranged attack, your close range attack, and how many shield dice you roll. That's your health, that's your ult, that's your traits, and that's how many power you add to the pool of power your team gets to, to use a turn. From memory, as I say. So that looks about the same to me. We might crack those open and look again in a second. And then we've got the rule book. This feels thicker than the, the other edition of the rule book. So we'll just, we're not going to look through all of it, but it appears to be 66 pages if you include scenarios at the end. It has a little bit of lore to start with, including lore in the faction. So hey, I know those guys. I'm in the process of painting them. In fact, that one's waiting on my painting table right now. Playing the game, what you need. Hobby tools for cleaning and painting miniatures, because they do come unpainted, obviously. Cleaning them up. And then the rules. So it looks like the same basic turn is still in play. Power up, activate, end. How you attack, how you disengage. Yeah, this all looks familiar. Oh, this, yeah, this looks different. It seems like there's a lot more uh, passives and then traits. Which is good, that'll add more complexity in a, in a good way. More depth. And then there's upgrades, which are faction specific. Explanation of a card, understanding alt form cards. Oh, right, so you can transform people. That's new. Terrain features, so terrain rules. Ah, scenarios. How many scenarios are in this book? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ooh. Quite a lot, actually. I was uh, 10. Is it going to be? No, 12? Okay. 14? Alright, 14 scenarios. That is a lot more than I remember there being in the first edition of the game. I think there was only 6, I think. Maybe misremembering. But yeah, so there's 14 scenarios with special rules, victory conditions, deployments listed. And then you have some model shots from the other various factions that are available for the game. And if you're not, I really should have covered this earlier, but if you're not familiar with Bot War at all, it obviously takes inspiration from various 80s and early 90s cartoons. GoBots, Transformers, G.I. Joe, whatever that one was called with the dinosaurs that had guns on them. The 80s were weird, man, trust me. Anyway, let's look at some of this uh, resin. Alright, so I've cracked open one of the bags. This is one of the coil bags because I'm not familiar with them as a faction. Apologies if you hear my dog in the background, she doesn't like someone outside. Let's just see what we get and the quality of. I'm used to not doing coloured resin, plastic, whatever. So this is the very large lad that comes in the the box for coil. Let's see how close we can get this. I don't want the shadow of the camera to cast. I think that's in focus. So we've got separate pieces for his hands and there's always hints of what they can turn into, which I like and is obviously part of the aesthetic. So that would be his other hand, just to give you some idea of scale. How does he compare to a beast lord actually? Let me see here. Because the Beast Lords were the biggest thing they had that wasn't like a combiner before. He's taller. Yeah, he is actually larger. Neat. And then it also comes with a couple of little guys who have smaller bases. They've kind of got drills on them. But again, I've never had an issue with the quality of them, but maybe getting them in focus that will be a bit of a problem. And I, I paint using contrast paint mostly, and I've never had an issue with how they take to contrast paint either, which is a great thing. Some resin has big issues. This part, I presume, is for his back. Either like that or like that. I'm not sure. But I guess it's to hint at the wings of his vehicle form. But yeah, the quality looks great. And if you don't want to paint, it's coloured, so obviously no good guys, bad guys. Red versus whatever the other colour was, blue. And on that note, I'll open up one of the Valiant bags just so we can compare 
the uh, quality there as well. But this is the general idea of what you get. Two bags of villains, two bags of heroes, and their stat cards, so comparable quality in the other bag. There's, it looks like there's a lot more bits in that one actually as well, to keep in mind. Alright, here is one of the Valiants. I believe this is the leader, who is a combination of two prior models, one of which I had, because he was in the starter set. So this is his cape. I'm trying to see how this attaches on. It might only attach once his head's there in place. I'm not sure because it looks like it just goes on like that. Uh, I'm not seeing an obvious mold. Oh, actually, yeah, it goes onto his shoulder blades right there. Okay, yeah, it does go on. I can't just let it rest though. He's a, he's slightly smaller than the large lad in the other team. Oh, the sword is a little. Oh, actually, no, I think it's meant to have a diamond in the middle. I thought it was bent, but no, it's got a diamond in the middle. So we go like that, somehow. And then what have we got here? That's his head. Very Romanesque helmet. So that'd be facing that way. His gun, I, that, this is probably on purpose. It looks like the old Nez gun. And what are these? Oh, we have alternative sculpts for his head. So we've got like half mask, full mask, and no mask. By the looks of things. Didn't realise the results. Also, in between cuts, I have undone one of their packs of ID cards. Um, actually, so I don't remember, the, I think the top right number is the points to bring them into a fight, because I'm pretty sure SR is strategy rating, which denotes the activation order. So yeah, there's there he is, that's Ducal. 28 points, presumably. And he has a bunch of rules. He also generates three power and he has a ton of health as well. Ten health compared to like most of the rest of them are six. Supercharge, cold start, traffic stop, herbs, and RJ, who is a sniper. And sounds like they have stealth, but they're a glass cannon because they've only got four health. So again, there is also that pack of cards for the, the bad guys as well. I didn't open that set right now because I don't want to clutter everything. I say is my table is very clearly cluttered. But I can show you the other stuff that Anthony sent along to me. But that is what you get in the starter set, just to be clear. So anything else I show you from this point on is separate purchases. So that's everything tidied away in the box. Again, if you want to go check out the old battle reports, do remember it was not using the Turbo Edition. I'll be studying the book to learn the new edition. But I was also sent these, which I've opened just now off camera. These are upgrade packs, I believe, for if you are transitioning from the previous edition to the new edition so that you have cards for existing models that were from the previous edition and um, Anthony knew what cards, uh, what models rather I had from the battle reports so has provided very graciously the cards required. For instance that's the old version of Ducal who was called General Duke I think although it says General Duck here although I guess name change for reasons so these are updated with their new, their new passives and rules. If I'd known these were right here, I would have had the old version to compare, but sadly I don't have it handy. But these are also the upgrade cards, and again, the all the Valiants that were released in the, the base edition of the game. And these are the ones for the Atlanticans, who were the other faction in the original Star Box. Oh, did I not cut it enough? No, no, I did. So again, these should just be... Yeah, the upgrade cards and bot cards so that's he was one of the guys from the starter set you get four out of the five needed to do the atlantican combiner i only ever got the the oh what are they called deceivers i only ever got the deceiver combiners but they're great and i'm very happy with the the massive combiner form you can get for them there's a few more available for the game since then um so that's the cards for them as well but like i mentioned at the top of the video I also was given, as I reached to my side here, a very large Bot War Card City Terrain, which, if we look at the back here, comes with a plethora of cardboard buildings to the scale that the game is meant to be played, which again, if you've watched my old battle reports, I, I just have to use the scenery I have available, so it wasn't really to the scale you're supposed to use. They're supposed to be building high robots almost, or just under, whereas I was just using like, you know, standard like skirmish game terrain but this is a double-sided cardboard i think mat with a city side airport side and the associated buildings that fit the themes and also goes with the scenarios in the uh, turbo edition 
rule book that we just looked at. Again, this is a separate purchase and was given to me. Let's just take a quick look though at what we have here. Oh, those are actually larger than I thought they were. Like the, the hangers are actually, they look surprisingly big. So it's all one piece, I think. Yes, it is. So we're going to have to excuse the noise. I'll quickly open this. It could be tidy, but at the same time, I could also just... There we go. So, we have our hangers for the airport side. And then we have our buildings. Yeah, I'm act I actually misrepresented this in my head about how big these buildings were. I mean, obviously, you're going to fold them. But they're still larger than I thought they were. So they're, they're going to look good on camera, I think. And on that note, there will be more Bot War coverage coming. I'm probably going to use the, mid uh, the miniatures I already have painted once I get through the rules and try and get a grasp of uh, the new edition. But I will try and also get some of the new models painted from the starter set. I think I'm going to focus on coil because I kind of uh, like how those miniatures look. I'll show you the back of the starter set again to show you what they look like. But they look kind of neat, I like the colour scheme for them. And it's a faction I've never played, so I thought that would be a neat thing to try for this new edition. So there's a bunch of buildings. That's got to be at least at least two dozen. And then it does look like, yeah, okay, so the, the boards are thick cardboard or thick paper. It looks like four sections for each. I actually thought they were double-sided, I was wrong. They are not double-sided, they are separated. So that is section three and four. Oh, actually, maybe there's six sections then, because that's all airport to me. Yeah, and then we're on to the city square, where it kind of hints at where you can put buildings, but really, unless you're following it precisely in a scenario, or if you're just doing a battle for fun, you just put the buildings wherever you want. You can put a hangar on the city tile. All that matters is you've got the terrain and you're using the terrain correctly. And there's... See, because that looks like more airport to me, and that's definitely building. So yeah, I, th I think there's more sections to these than I thought, because you do play in a standard 3x3 table, so that's got to be at least 9 tiles then, right? 3x3? Assuming that they're 12x12, 12 12, which at a glance I would say that probably is 12x12. 12 12. So, well, maybe. We'll see. So this will be what we're playing on um, to have the official terrain and whatnot set up, but again, this is a separate purchase. You can use whatever terrain you like if you buy the, the starter box. And the starter box is a way to jump in with the rules, dice, etc. you need. If you want to try out one of the other factions, there are starter sets available. You get a lot of miniatures for a fair price, at least in the UK, I would say, because from what I looked at. But yeah, there's what the coil set looks like. Oops, sorry, as I hit the camera. So that's the large lad we're taking a look at there. Oh yeah, you do put the wings up at the back there. So you're getting a couple of small guys, you're getting one huge guy, and then like four mediums. And then for the valiants, you're kind of getting one small, so that's the sniper. That we looked at one relatively tall leader and then four other guys i can't tell you offhand pricing uh, there are stockists or a stockist in america from what i remember i think you can see a list of their stockists by just going to the main website right there traitorsgalaxy.com.au and you can see more about it there if you want to see how in general how the game flows i suggest uh, checking out the battle reports i did in the first edition of the game Obviously some things might be a bit different now, but I'm sure the core gameplay is more or less the same, so that can give you a good idea of the flow. If you're familiar with skirmish games, it plays like a skirmish game. You're just you're just playing with, with bots. And it's fun. It's fun, it's easy to learn, and there's, there's some strategic death to having a strategy rating and then also a limited resource in the form of the energy cubes that you have to give out to your team. Like, you don't necessarily give all the energy cubes to someone who generates three. They might be better self served somewhere else. But anyway, yeah, once again, this was given to me gratis for producing this video, but it is not sponsored. There was no money exchanging hands. But you will see some more Bot War in the future. And with that, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. I'm sure Anthony will see them, and he can answer better than I can. So thank you for watching, and ta-ta for now.